An Australian team recently reported in Nature the discovery of an extinct fossil fish from around 380 million years ago, which gave birth like a mammal. Now, their research, along with the Natural History Museum in London, has led to an even more significant discovery. We think this latest Nature paper is incredibly important because it's all about the origins of sex, sex invertebrates, sex using copulation, males internally fertilising the females. And uh, that's intrinsically interesting, I think, to everyone on the planet. What inspired the research were fossils collected from a unique remote site in Western Australia, the Gogo Plain. Well, I love field work. It's just great getting out there with a hammer and smashing rocks and finding fossils. I've actually been working on this site, Gogo, in Western Australia since 1986 and after 22 years of collecting we've made some really amazing discoveries. The fascinating thing about Gogo is that you're actually standing in the reef. You're walking along the plain which is the remnants of the sea floor and on either side of you you've got the towering cliffs which are made up of fossilised algae and sponges. Fossils are the only evidence we have of past life, and especially this group, the placoderms. There's no living representatives now, so it gives us a window into our past. So yeah, this is a good skull of a paleontologist. The truth is, though, that when you find something, you know, wow, I've, I've just found a fossil fish, but you don't really know what you've got until you bring it back to the lab and prepare it out, and that's where the second wave of discovery happens. Zarina Johansson had collected fossils herself from the Gogo Plain. The crucial techniques for extracting fossil specimens were developed at the Natural History Museum in London, where Zarina works as a paleontologist. The acid preparation technique which was used to prepare these fossils from the Gogo formation was first uh, established by a staff member here at the Natural History Museum back in the 40s. His name was Harry Toombs and he was essentially the fossil fish curator. You take your geological hammer and find one of these nodules and you crack it open. If you're lucky, what you find is evidence of bone within that nodule. You close up the nodule and glue it together and you can take it back to the lab to process. And you put it into a dilute solution of vinegar, of acetic acid. And the acetic acid eats away all the limestone leaving the fossil fish behind. Recently, the acid concentration has been drastically reduced so revealing soft tissues never before seen in such fossils. Because here inside the adult mother fish were the bones of a juvenile, an unborn embryo, and still attached to it was a mineralized umbilical cord, truly one of the most remarkable fossils found in the history of paleontology. Finding an intact umbilical cord is what proved that Mata Piscis gave birth to live young. But the new Nature paper asks, was this a very rare phenomenon? This specimen is the one that was described in the new paper. It's a placoderm called Incisoscutum richii. These are the plates of a smaller placoderm housed within the body of the larger placoderm. Now, this was originally interpreted as being the last meal of this adult placoderm. But because of the work that Kate and John did, we were able to reinterpret this specimen and say that this is actually an embryo within this adult placoderm. So they now knew that another group of fossil fish gave birth, but at first the researchers didn't see how these fish could have had the sex needed for internal fertilisation. We'll prepare this one up next in the lab. If you look at a model of these kinds of, of basic placoderms, you always see the pelvic fin as being very simple. But we discovered that these fish had an extra lobe that extended in the, the middle of the pelvic fin. Then the penny dropped. What John realised was that the extra lobe was the clasper the male fish used to mate with the female, just like a modern shark has. So in other words, these placoderms had a pelvic girdle modified for copulation. So, you know, we have an expression that uh, humans like to get a leg over, but these placoderms they actually like to get a leg in. Kate and John, with their previous Nature paper, showed that you have internal fertilisation in this group called the Tictodontida. 
But our new work shows that you also get internal fertilization or sex within this very large group of placoderms called the arthrodires. So it seems to be a more typical condition of the placoderms as a whole. And probably now we could say that it's a typical condition of jawed vertebrates as a whole. So finally we had a model of how these fish were reproducing and the fact that internal fertilisation and uh, viviparity was much more widespread in these early fossil vertebrates than previously thought. The fossilised remains of a 380 million year old fish, a placoderm, an ancient extinct group that's no longer around today. It's the origins of true vertebrate sex here back in the Devonian 380 million years ago. Thank you.